Hello everyone, my name is Forrest. Welcome to Different Media, the channel all about alternative dwellings. In today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing this e-bike here. This is a foldable e-bike by Engue, and it is the model L20 and the 2.0. Now, the reason I'm reviewing it is because if you're living in a van, if you're living in a tiny house, you might be far away from the city and you might not want to park in the city if you have a big motorhome or van. So with one of these, you could pack this in your van and you could take this out, you could charge it with your solar and you could go into town, you could get to places that your van or your motorhome or your whatever rig you have might not want to take you to. I've had a few different e-bikes in my day and I will say this has become my favorite. I love how light it is compared to other e-bikes. E-bikes are oftentimes really big, really bulky, and with the added electronics, it can become quite heavy. But this bike, because it is trying to have a small form factor, ends up being a lot lighter than the other ones, which just makes it easier to pack away, easier to pick up, and easier to ride. Um, when it's less weight, you can pedal and actually go further. So the max mileage on this is 68 miles, so that's per charge. And that is with a pedal assist. So that's using a lot of your own power and a little bit of the motor power um, for just keeping you up to speed or assisting you up those hills. Now, if you're just using full throttle, you can get up to about 28 miles just off of a full charge battery, which is quite impressive actually. It's mechanical disc brake. You're going to pay a little bit more to get hydraulic brakes on an e-bike. And actually, personally, I found that you don't really need it. I mean, they are technically more efficient. Um, I've had issues with my uh, hydraulic e um, brakes where uh, it's there, there's been a leak and then you're trying to top it up. You're trying to find where the leak is, patch it, or actually have to take it in. These disc brakes are just simple mechanical disc brakes that you can tighten if they get loose and you can change out really, really easily after enough wear on them. Um, I prefer that. I don't need that extra stopping power. I'm not uh, in a situation where I feel like hydraulic brakes are necessary for an e-bike. When I got this bike, it came in a cardboard box and taking it out was fun, taking it out was easy and assembling it was really easy. It was well protected and well packaged. So there was a lot of uh, protection around it. Assembling it was really easy. It did come with a manual that was um, fairly straightforward, but just, you know, basically unfold it, start connecting things. Um, I would look at the manual if this is your first e-bike, but I didn't actually need to because it's a very simple setup. This is my first folding e-bike. Um, so there was a couple things where I was like, okay, how does this work? And I will say that this handlebar it actually folds down at an angle, and this is just for a more compact uh, put-away system. Um, but it does take a couple adjustments of folding it down, folding it up, and, and standing in front with the wheel between your legs to get to where the handlebars are going to be straight onto that wheel. So that is something to consider when you're setting up. Just a little trial and error is what I found worked well for setting that up, and really I've had no issues since. Um, there are some shocks in the front, which work really well. I've been taking it off-road on these um, hiking, walking trails. And that, and with the combination of the shock in the seat itself, I have found that it has been so much more comfortable than any of the other e-bikes that I've used. I have uh, an e-bike without the shock in the seat, and I've had an e-bike with a, a suspension of, of the rear wheel, but I find that even that one doesn't work as well as this as this shock absorber in the seat itself. Uh, I can actually sit down and hit bumps and it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I used to have to actually stand up on the pedals when I'm hitting those bumps just so that you know your your butt isn't hitting that seat. Uh, with this one, I can hit some bumps. Not a big deal. It's pretty awesome. I'm really, really happy with that. The other thing I like about this one too is a lot of the e-bikes have wider tires and what happens is if there's ever a situation where your battery dies or even not, even if you're just pedaling and, and going far distance, there's a lot more traction and that means actually a lot more resistance. So this wheel on this bike is kind of in between a regular bike wheel 
and a fat tire wheel. It is technically a fat tire wheel, but it's on the narrower side. And that just makes it have less resistance when you're on the road. But it's also wide enough that when you hit those bumps or you hit some gravel uh, or you have to go on to the side of the road and not on the pavement or cement, you're still you still have enough tire that uh, you can handle those things and you don't have to worry about it. Like if you were on a, a, a road bike, um, a really thin wheeled road bike. So it's kind of that perfect middle ground for tire size that I think works really, really well. The front light on it works really well. I've used this in the dark and find it. I can see wherever I need to go. The handlebars are comfortable. The grips are rubber. I've had um, fabric ones before, kind of a synthetic fabric where it starts to tear. Uh, I have no issue um, at all with any of the design choices of this bike. I find that it has been well thought out and it has been thought out in the way where everything just works. Everything is simple and nothing is more complex than it needs to be. I mean, this is already an e-bike. There is some smart technology in there compared to an all mechanical bike, but it's just basic and it's simple enough that it's not gonna cause you any worries. So I'm super happy with this bike. I'm very happy with Ngwe for sending me this bike, for sponsoring this video. And I appreciate you all. If you do want to check out, uh, there is a discount link in the description that they provided me. And if you found that anything about this bike was compelling, I would check out that link. I would check out what they have to offer. I would check out this bike specifically, but they do have a range of other e-bikes that all look pretty great as well. I don't have first on hand experience with them, but if this bike says anything about the other ones and about the company itself, then they'll be amazing. The best thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning of this, this is only an 800 US dollar bike. You can spend a lot more on a non e-bike and you can spend a lot more on an e-bike. This is kind of a lower cost entry level bike. And it is perfect, like I said, for any of you that are that are living in a van, a motorhome, traveling, anything like that, because of its relatively lightweightness compared to other e-bikes and because of its stowing ability to be able to stow that away wherever you need it, wherever you have space for it. And uh, for me, this has been a great choice. And uh, I just wanted to thank you all for watching and listening. If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Forrest, this is Different Media, and we'll see you on the next video.